Welcome to the Hall of Clestron. Um, this is this property, as you now know, belongs to the John Ray Society, and we're very excited about that. And we're getting ready to restore uh, the hall. It's a lot of work that needs doing. But first, I'm going to uh, introduce you to the landscape here. Um, it's a landscape that John Ray would have been extremely familiar with. In fact, I've just been thinking, even these fields. Um, will be much the same as what John Ray will have known because the Honeymans who owned the estate were great land reformers and they will have marked out these large square fields uh, in, in their planning. But down on the shore uh, there is uh, at the end of the dike, you can just see it rises a tiny bit. That is the, the, the sail house that belonged to the Hall of Clestron and there are beautiful boat noosts down there. They're in risk of a bit of erosion, uh, but in time we'll, we'll get to save them. But the, uh, the, they will have used that to travel off to Stromness and back. Um, John Ray himself with his brothers sailed all through here um, and, and, and into Hoy Sound. And Hoy Sound is where the ships will have gone to Canada you look that way and it's Canada. You can't miss it. Carry straight on, you get to Hudson's Bay. So we have the boat noosed. Then in the field down there, leaning against a stone dike, is a large monolith. And that was, that was a Neolithic standing stone, which stood somewhere in this field. We've got a good idea where it was from and it's on uh, a, an Ordnance Survey map of 1882. So we can position it uh, very well. It was actually removed in the 50s um, and luckily just left at the side there. So John Ray will have probably stood in the shadow of that at times where he couldn't be seen and he would shoot passing birds. Um, further along the shore is what's called the storehouse and it's thought that that was the old hall before this hall was built um, but we're not totally sure but anyway the the legend goes that uh, well it's not a legend it's history pirate Gao came here and this was his penultimate uh, raid uh, he um, raided the the hall as it was but the servants um, uh, and, and the mistress, they hid all the silver under a load of feathers and, um, and it was saved and they got the pirates, they, they gave the pirates drink and stuff and, and then they went off up to Edie where he tried to sack um, a big house there uh, but he was caught. So, and that was the end of him. But, uh, yeah, so looking around we've got the hall um, there was a road from Orfa came this way and we've got a grand entrance here which is the four stair and uh, a fine doorway above it. So good guests would come here and uh, you know the posh ones. This is the, the south side of the hall is the pleasure side. The big garden at my left here, the walled garden, was a pleasure garden. Uh, so you can imagine the parties that, that went on here. But coaches would come along here and there was a big turning circle in front of the hall. And we've got evidence of it in the ground. There's a slight dip uh, going over there and that's part of the path of the, the coaches. But we'll find that out later. But as you see, there's a pavilion at that point where Mary Claire is digging. Uh, we're doing some excavations at the uh, north side of the hall, which you'll see. Uh, but there was another pavilion which matched it at the other side of the hall. And uh, we've excavated some of that. That was destroyed completely in the 50s. Well, n not completely. There are remnants of it. Um, now, these two pavilions would have actually been higher than they look now. There's a photograph of about 1890, and the pavilions are two story, um, 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 uh, two or three feet higher, the walls were higher, and the roof was at a 45 degree 
pitch. So they were quite impressive. Uh, but for some reason, maybe the roof was uh, um, weakened and they needed to replace it. So instead of making this high pitch roof, they reduced the height of the building and made a lower pitch. So, but you can see all that inside the building. And there's a road here that goes down to the boat noosts, which are there. So you can, and all the stonework from here, the posh stone, um, the architectural stone, was quarried at Brim's Quarry uh, on Hoy, and then it would have been sailed uh, through here and landed down at the noosts and then carted up. So um, there we are. This is the environment, the environment that John Ray saw and used and practiced his skills in hunting, fishing, sailing, horse riding, all the things he needed to be to become an Arctic explorer. And I dare say being an Arcadian lad, he felt quite probably felt quite classless and mixed with the servants, knew them personally and um, and mixed with the farm hands too. So this gave him again the ability to mix and respect the peoples that he met on his amazing travels.